Yeah, when you're ready. Yeah. All right. Well, this is my work based learning presentation about my work placement. So, uh, to start with, I, um, I initially wanted to gain some work experience. So, I started by emailing 12 local graphic design companies in the hope of getting something. And uh, five of them applied, asking for portfolios. But um, the director of MBG, new brand, new brand guru, actually phoned me, and an uh, agreement was reached where they offered a two-day placement the following week. And uh, after them two days, it was agreed that I'll go in every Thursday on a um, sort of internship, ongoing work placement until further notice. Uh, yeah, that's sort of MBG there. And um, after receiving the phone call, I decided to look at what they do. And it was quite interesting, really, because they specialise in extreme sports. And uh, some of their clients included uh, Hero Energy, O'Neill, Crazy Fly, and JBC. And um, from looking at this, I initially thought that it would be a pretty good experience but I didn't actually know what I would be doing. So then um, I sort of, we were emailing, just like talking about what I'd be doing when I'm in there. And uh, it was agreed that I'd be doing some design work for a few of their clients. And uh, while researching the company, I found that they work closely with Frontside Marketing, uh, which is, run by the same people, but they don't specialise in one specific um, sort of thing, like MBG does extreme sports, this sort of does everything, not like anything, like sort of builders, gardeners, uh, anything really. So, um, the uh, expectations of the employer when, were, um, Included punctuality, uh, experience of software, uh, reliability, a good attitude, adaptability, and a good initiative. I also had some personal expectations going into the work experience. That included um, improving my communication skills, included, um, improving my assertiveness, building a good portfolio, and uh, gaining experience in the workplace, and improving and learning new different skills. So, uh, from understanding the expectations, I looked at the National Career Service, um, which stated the roles and responsibilities of what I would be doing. And um, a few of these included discussing, discussing requirements of the project with the clients and the team, where the communication would be crucial, which is something that I wanted to personally build on anyway. And, um, Producing sketches and computer visuals using specialist software to prepare designs, and um, which is which was one of the employer expectations anyway. And uh, in the employer report, all these aspects were covered under the standard of work and development of practical skills, and these skills improved week on week, taking on difficult tasks and not hiding away which is what Sam said in the um, employer report. Um, the far, first task given to me when I got there was to create images for Hero Energy social networking pages. And uh, the idea was to create a, a um, a sort of poster sort of image which would be used on Facebook where they had um, used an application, a plugin on Facebook which when clicked on it would direct the user to a page where they could buy the mints. So what the client wanted, he wanted the big bold writing saying pretty much buy your mints and how much they cost and how much, how much, what you get for that and that includes free shipping. So this was final design and um, 
in this process, so I created about, must have been about 10 different variations just to show them what I can do and um, show them different, different ways and how the information can be presented. And I've got a quote here somewhere. Karen Lees from Nolds Graphics states that when creating multiple designs, it gives more option and allows the clients to give more feedback. This was the intention and it worked as different designs were picked apart to combine with the final design. So this is a final design which was based on two or three different variations, be it the background, the text and the position of the logo. Um, the second task was to create a leaderboard on their actual website. The aim of the leaderboard was to um, have different athletes under the hero section as they would be using the product and um, sort of using it to promote their sort of sport. So the sport that they do will be in the second column. Then they'll get points for a different sort of like how well they did in that sport, like performing moves or time or that sort of thing. So this was the first design and I sort of based it on this one with the background colour and I sort of put the logo in the bottom left hand corner just sort of subtly there. But then I went over it again and I decided to take away the blue and just have the um, grey sort of concrete style background which was the theme of their website anyway. And the, um, yeah so I just put the um, the images under the points section, they are not to be there. They're not meant to be there. They're meant to be under the sports section. But I sort of did them both just to show, to show them how they could have it. But when showing it to the actual client, they decided they didn't like the profile pictures, so they wanted portraits, which I thought looked a bit naff anyway. <laughs> and um, they got rid of the little images, which took me ages to, go, to create anyway. And um, they just wanted the text, so I thought oh, that's fair enough. But they like that in the end, and I'm not entirely sure if it's up and running yet, because some of the athletes are a bit uh, slack. The um, second, the well, the next task was to create was to create a um, some images for JVC and their multi-purpose action camera, the Addiction. And uh, what the client wanted, they wanted the um, sort of still images to put at the beginning and end of the video to uh, sort of introduce and tell the audience what the athlete is doing. And um, when sort of creating this, I come across some branding constraints which the which JVC sort of gave me. And they were not to manipulate the JVC logo, so they gave me three different variations I could do use. They gave me the, the white one, they gave me a black one, and a black and white one. They also said the same about the Addiction logo, where they wanted it either like that, or with the X's in grey and black, or with the Addiction in grey or black. So that was something new, but it wasn't that difficult in the end. Um, and uh, sort of after completing the task, I was given a employee report where um, outlined was areas which I could improve, and the most notable ones were self confidence and my initiative. And um, how to improve your life is a successful way to improve your life health singles out different ways that self-confidence can be improved. Uh, these included creating lists of the best attributes and aspects that are truly motivating. Um, project self-confidence even if I'm not feeling confident and uh, don't think about the task too much. And personally, a motivational approach was adopted because um, I sort of struggle getting motivated sometimes and uh, find an inspiration as well. So in the office, um, they sort of helped me. They 
we would watch we watch videos. Um, we read art, they read articles, like and show me articles, and we look at sort of different images as well. So they've sort of been helping me build on this as well. And um, with my initiative, uh, they said that it was held back by the lack of self-confidence. And uh, fastcompany.com identified five different tips that would uh, help intensify it. These included giving myself permission to decide for myself, and uh, make choices and act on them, do not wait to be inspired, increase accountability and live by your word. And uh, these could also be in impacted on motivation. Overall, this experience has helped me uh, greatly, really, it's, especially with um, my communication skills. I feel that I have um, yeah, done well. And uh, as well as communication, I think my time management has um, been helped. Because for my work placement, I've, I singled out Thursday every week that I would just concentrate on that instead of any other commitments. So I'd concentrate the rest of the week on my coursework as well as balancing my other job as well. So I think that's pretty much, that's helped a lot. And uh, my further goal is to hopefully get a job with this company and then eventually find well, see how that goes and maybe do something for myself. Um, so to conclude, I feel that I have developed throughout the experience um, with different attributes improving week on week. And this progression has continued. Um, and as well as working from home, uh, where a constant stream of emails has been consistent. And uh, positive psychology in practice states that when working from home it allows more adult behaviour where individuals are trusted to be active and independent, which proves that they trust me to get the work done and that they're quite happy with what I'm doing at the moment. And. Um, my thoughts on the employer report were, well, I was over the moon really, because all but two of the sections scored five out of five, which were accompanied with positive, uh, positive comments, as well as improvements on how to make myself better, which I thought was really nice. And. Um, Yeah, overall, the work experience has helped vastly to develop work-based skills, get to know the industry and build a, comp a comprehensive portfolio. As I've um, designed logos for them, I've done posters, I've worked with their social media, uh, done a little bit of video, and uh, a little bit of website design, but I haven't coded that because they have someone else to do that, which is quite nice. <laughs> and um, I've also had opportunities to work with some different clients as well, ranging from sports to builders, gardeners, I've even uh, created a school logo which is, which I found out last week is being embroidered onto their sort of uniform which is quite nice. And um, yeah, I think it was, I think it was great, I think, that's it, enjoyed it. You said your motivation, so it's some of your emotional um, challenges, you know, motivation and self esteem going in. Um, when you started researching the companies to work for, yeah. did that apply factor as well? Um, when I first saw some of the clients that MVG worked for, I was pretty really motivated to get stuck in because uh, it was, yeah. I also found out that Sam, the director, has actually got a world record for kite surfing, and I think that's really astonishing. Really. So to work with him was awesome. So, so. Peter.
peer mentoring, looking yeah. after the people that you work with. Yes, it's so, um, important to you. So they all like to sort of motivate each other as well, like by looking at different things. Which I think is great. Putting that out to the floor. How did time management go about still working there? Like, did they have deadlines and stuff? How did you cope with that? Um, they gave deadlines for a couple of the projects, but not all of them, because they know that I had other components, which is which is good. But when they set a specific deadline, I sort of pushed everything back to concentrate on that task. And that sort of worked well, so I've just been doing that ever since. And you know the session where you said that you, you, you spent ages on uh, working on the uh, visual graphics and yeah. then they took them away and didn't decide not to use them. Did that cause any issues for you in terms of communication or? motivation again. Um, Is there any techniques you had to put in place to combat those if you did? I don't really think it affected me that much because I sort of expected that to happen at some stage or another when because that was one of the first sort of tasks I was given. So to begin with I thought that it would happen quite a lot. But in the end it didn't happen as much as I thought it would. So to get it out of the way early on was sort of helped me really. Yeah, and then she lets you know that it's not always going to be perfect the first time. And was it, was it quite uh, easy or hard to organise your time once you started getting those, those placements after that two days initially? Um, when you had to look at your organisation? I found it hard to begin with because of the course, but after a while I sort of got used to it. And, um, I sorted out with work as well that I'd, I'd at least get one day a week to myself and uh, one day a week for placement and the rest of the week for the course and sort of, sort of worked in the end. You seem to have learned a little bit about yourself yeah. um, and quite emotional things, personal things um, and I think actually they are really valuable to, to learn about. In the end, you are you and you're kind of stuck. Not to put a negative now, but um, I'd really like to know how you like to develop your self-confidence. Do you have any ideas? Or once you realized that kind of self-confidence was quite an important part of what you needed to develop. Well, I thought it was um, quite confident in what I was doing anyway, but it's probably the way that I project the confidence to other people, I guess. So maybe I should do that a little bit more. Okay. Um, you mentioned at the beginning um, work experience expectations. Uh, I didn't catch quite if you like found those out. Who? Where did those come from, these set of expectations? Um, they were from, well, the employer ones, basically from the National Career Service under the roles and responsibilities, but I also set myself personal expectations as well. Mm. Like very consciously? Um, well, the main thing I wanted to get out of it was a, sort of the basis of a portfolio and of sort of kind of built one now. Mm. Do you think that's design. what graphic designers do a lot? What? Uh, make opportunities. Yeah. So even if things won't progress, it's still like, oh, we'll get something out of it. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a really good professional skill. Um, I'm just interested if you asked the employer asked them what? what their expectations were. No, I didn't. They just sort of told me to go in and then they just sort of extended that. And it's just been sort of building ever since. Mm -hmm. But the employer report sort of had the expectations on there anyway. Mm -hmm. It was nice to read their comments towards the expectations. Do you think that they were like entirely honest as like a, an, a real employee or they want to make sure you also 
felt good coming out of that. Um, no, because we sort of had a discussion when I was in it about it, and he sort of spoke to me, especially about the two points that I could improve on. And um, he seen, well, what was their advice on those two points that you could improve on? Um, I can't actually remember. But um, he noted it in the employer report anyway, that the initiative was affected by the self-confidence. Yeah. Yeah. So how would you get around those self-confidence issues if you're maybe working, it's because you're saying, I'd like to work with this company for a while, and then maybe possibly go into self-employment or personal project. What, what, what skills could you get from the, working with a company that you think you'll need to get to that point? When, when is that point that you might go into personal project? Is it, again, just a feeling, or when you've got enough of your own work, your own projects coming through those? You know, when would that point be that you think you'll move past teamwork into? I'd, um, well, I just want to get to know how it all works before I go to do it for myself. So, and um, I'd rather get a job now than work for myself now and be a failure sort of on my own because I don't know how it sort of how the sort of industry works. And I, 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 can I jump in there because I really I actually really like what you're saying. Because I think it's really important to come out of anything and go, right, I've learned you know, I realise the strengths that I've got out of this, I've realised what I, what did things I do have of, of it, but I think it's also just as valid to go, what didn't I get out of that? And I don't you know, I'm not trying to like put any negative spin on what you achieved because it sounds really valuable actually yeah. um, but what could you kind of discuss really briefly you know an overview of the things that you think of that industry that you didn't quite get a hold of well this one mm -hmm. well it's a graphic design industry yeah well, Web design graphic design I'm not really sure what you mean by okay what aspects of that business do you could you not do what oh, do you need development side. with financial side? That's just don't know how, like what to charge or um, how to ask for the money and that sort of stuff. I'd rather be, have guidance doing it. Mm. Okay, so is that the main thing? Probably not, but that's the main thing I can think about is the money. That's, well. Mm. So looking forward, you you you've got some further work experience with them. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? Um. Well, we were negotiating it last week, but um, the big boss of he wasn't in last week. He was away working. So hopefully this week, or we'll just carry on. What what is the big boss's title? Official title, uh, not name. Title is the director. Okay. Let's try and use this terminology. Yeah, but he's a little bit more. He's like the head director. That's uh, well, but he's sort it depends of, on, on the size of the company, how it's structured. Do you think that's another area that would be worth investigating? Well, there's all different little companies branching from the two, and he sort of runs them all. Some other titles of, of em employees? Well, I only work with two in the office, which is Sam, who's the other director of the companies, and Jack, who's the account manager. And uh, they've got a coder who works from home. Why does he work from home, do you think? Um, I think it's because he's got children. They, they're constantly Skyping there. Okay. That's interesting. I think in terms of adapting, I mean, you seem to, you made the choice, you had five replies and you chose this company. And then you said, and then I researched the company. Yeah. So, what happened? How did the initial research come? How did you initially find the company? Um, 
I didn't look at one company because I wanted to email a group of them. So I just Googled local graphic designers and, and 12 come up. And I sort of sent an email to each, each of them and five replied and then MVG called me. Then I looked to them. So you didn't go with any expectations of what kind of work or project you were looking for? It's the title, the job, the specific you were looking for? Well, initially I just wanted a graphic design work for Spence Placement. How does it, uh, one last question, how does it change your expectations now? Uh, they sound reasonably flexible, chilled, or no, let's put that professionally, um, <laughs> casual, yeah. uh, um. That, that kind of a that kind of a, an organisation small. It has really because I'm used to working, like, actually going in and being having set times, but they don't have set times. They sort of do it when they can and get it done. Do they have like our our like um, certain amount of hours they have to do every week? Yeah, they they work in the office Monday to Friday, but that's depending when. The I mean, do individual positions within the company have certain amount of hours that they must attend? Sure. Do you know about that? But they open the office Monday to Friday, 10 till 4. So I'm sure it's because usually it works like that. I believe it works like that. I'm not sure about that. They sort of they have some flexibility, but at the same time they have to meet those hours as well. Mm -hmm. Because you are paying them after all for the hour they work. <laughs> I think it's really interesting that you compare it to where do you, where you work in Sainsbury's? No, no. Buttons. Buttons, that's what it is. <laughs> okay. And I mean, what what is the difference in, in feeling? How do you feel personally? Um, more or less valued, more or less able to make change, input, contribute, used, uh, you know, I'm talking emotional language. I don't know, it may sound weird, but I prefer being casual as the work that I was doing is more respected than the work I sort of do at Butlins, where there's sort of a bigger team and it's sort of harder to single anyone out. Do you think it has negatives as well as positives? Can you think of those? Negatives. I did say just one more thing, but it's getting it's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know the, in the negatives. Well, well I, I know the negatives, but I'd like to hear them from you. This is your presentation. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll give one example. Um, it's it's about having that that dis that self discipline. Oh yeah, yeah. You can get distracted, I guess. Mm -hmm. Probably, yeah. Can you think of others? Um, really. I prefer working in the office though than working from home. Do you think, uh, you know, at Butlins, you, you each role has a responsibility, and it's set, right? You've got to go and look after. There's only so they need so many lifeguards in the swimming pool, yeah. and that's by law, and that they'll do the minimum possible to get it as cheap as possible, right? Okay. But you know your role. Whereas if you are casually employed like that, when do they say no? I can't do that work. Is there a risk that they go right and they've got so much on their shoulders that actually they can't do it? Or for work. Mm. Yeah. Is it a risk that it becomes unfair? Depends, really. I guess. Then what, did, what would it depend on? Yeah. Well, because different people do different things and people, some of the things might not be specific to what I do. Whereas it might be specific for them. Mm -hmm. well, let's say you've got multiple designers in there. Um, is there a risk that it becomes unfair that one is doing much more work than the other one? If it's that casual? Um, I guess, but I haven't come across that yet. I haven't really thought about it. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite a common factor in, in, you know, in industry, isn't it? Where some people think that they're carrying a lot of the boat and more than others if things aren't really, really well defined. 
yeah? In Tesco's, you're very, unless you get much higher up in the, in the salary scale, you're not gonna really worry about that. You're a cashier and you do, you know, the checkout. You know. There's a lot going in for a new job as well. You have to, you're gonna have to be aware of all those different roles to, to find your role in it, rather than just have your role defined and you stick to it. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to make the most of the opportunities, especially if you leave that teamwork environment, that company environment, to go on your own, because you'll be doing all those roles. Yeah. You'll be looking at the legal side of it, the artistic side, the creative side, the networking, publicity, marketing, not just the campaign, but of you yourself. Not just going out and meet clients, you'll be doing your accounts. You know what I mean? You're going to have to be aware of, just try, if you're going into that team environment, try to network with all of them. What is their role? What do they do? What can you learn from it? Because yeah. as soon as you start, you can, it, will in, it will greatly enhance your role within it because you'll have more of an understanding. If you can understand their roles, it will help you understand yours even more. Because you'll consider their roles, so you won't come up against these barriers. You'll already consider it at least at earlier stages. Cool, it sounds like you had a really valuable experience, but there's yeah. lots of opportunities to learn more. Maybe plan those out, structure those out. And communicate those to them. Like, look, I need guys. I need to. I want to learn these kind of things. They're like, ooh, actually, he's really serious. You know, you not know, just a, a kid from uni. You know. Yeah. Oh, that was really interesting. Cheers. Okay.